What should you drink with smoky barbecue? Mm, stay tuned. This week's episode, yes, I was craving some smoky barbecue food. You know, sausage links and tri-tip, um, brisket, <laughs> ribs, and chicken. Wow, it's so great. Well, we're so lucky because there are about five barbecue restaurants in about a five-mile radius of our house. So I have no problem finding barbecue food. There's even one that specializes in sort of Texas style. Which, by the way, if you do um, enjoy Texas style, very sort of dry, not, not too saucy. Wow, what a great uh, food and wine pairing. So smoky barbecue and the ones that do have sauce on it, no problem, because do I have a wine for you? It's the Zinfandel. <laughs> and this week we're going to look at one from Sonoma, and it's called Dry Creek Vineyard. And they've been around since the um, you know uh, mid-70s. And uh, now um, the original owner, his daughter, is now the president, and she is now running the, um, the winery. So it's sort of a nice story, a family-owned um, winery, and they just do fantastic, fantastic work. And um, they are also the same uh, winery who's known for really starting the, using the term meritage. So if you stay till the end, I'll give you uh, what meritage is all about. And as another little bonus, if you can see my glass, and you've probably heard people talk about, oh, the legs of a wine or the tears. <laughs> well, I found out that there was some research done at UCLA, and I'll share that with you too. So stay till the end, we'll talk about what's with this tears and legs of a wine, and does it mean it's good or not? So on to this week's episode on the Dry Creek Vineyard Zinfandel, 2017. About $20 to $25, I found my bottle at um, Total Wine & More. Wine.com has it, and you may be able to find it some other places, but it has won so many awards and some great um, uh, points, you know, so it gets really high scores. And it was even featured in Wine Spectators, you know, one of the top 100 uh, wines uh, out there for the Zinfandel. And I have to tell you, with Zinfandels, um, one thing that you'll notice about them is they tend to be sort of high in alcohol and deep purple, but they stand up to smoky barbecue food. So it's one of my favorite pairings, really, is to have uh, smoky barbecue food um, and a Zinfandel. It can really sort of hold its own. What's nice about this Zinfandel is not only it has a beautiful dark purple color, and you get the, it just smells like boysenberry to me, which is some of my, my favorite fruit. <laughs> so you get um, some dark red raspberries, you get boysenberries, and a little bit of hints of cocoa, and uh, it's not too tannic, and it has some nice acidity, which boy you need, because when we're having the sausage links, and the brisket, and the ribs, you need something to help cut through all of that fat. So this is not a vegetarian's um, uh, dinner for uh, any stretch of the imagination. So um, I think it's if you if you are going to have some barbecue food and you're like Trent, what's a great wine? Ah, you just can't lose with the Zinfandel, and this one in particular really impressed me. I've been sort of maybe staring away from some of the uh, Zinfandels lately. I find that the alcohol at 15, uh, 15, 8 even, uh, of course from California and uh, from Napa and from Sonoma, they just tend to be a little too much. They're also from uh, Paso Robles, you'll see Zinfandels from there too. So I've just been sort of maybe steering away from it, but I read so much about the Strike Creek um, and just what I, I'm so impressed with the, the, the winery. They're um, actually labeled 100% sustainable. So they work on being environmentally friendly and, and taking care of um, their property and they want to leave it to the next generation. So that was very nice to hear. So, um, and I do had some good scores and that doesn't always you know make me go out and buy a wine if it just has high scores. This one, did not disappoint. So I hope you'll get a chance to find the Dry Creek Vineyards uh, Zinfandel. It's their heritage vines. This sort of was 2017. Again, you know, say 20 to $25 range, and it just made our barbecue food just sing. It was so delicious. Well, you stay to the end, so let's talk about 
two things. So I told you the winery sort of um, came up with the term meritage. And you may be thinking, what's that all about? Well, meritage was a way of describing a red blend that used the same grape varieties that are famous in Bordeaux. Now, you know the French are. <laughs> you can't go around calling your, your red blend a Bordeaux because that's protected and that's, that's Bordeaux, France, and, and only they can uh, lay claim to that. So if the wines uh, are made from Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc and Merlot and Petit Verdot, so when it has those uh, blends and, uh, and the producer wants to say this, this is a, a red blend and they can put the label Meritage on it. So uh, Dry Creek, which was uh, very interesting, I had no idea they were the first winery to come up with that. Who knew? Well, the other thing I wanted to share with you, and this has been around for a long time. I remember when I was uh, much younger and uh, just getting into wine, people would look at the, they would look at the wine and swirl it and say, oh, what great legs. You can tell it's a good wine <laughs> if it has legs. And then it seemed like maybe in the 90s, people were saying things like, well, you know, the tears of the wine, as you can see it uh, drip down the glass. But what's kind of nice is a professor um, uh, in UCLA, and I'm gonna put the link down below. It was in the Wine Spectators um, June issue, and uh, I believe her name is uh, Andrea Bertozzi, and she's at UCLA, and she wanted to do a, a, a lab experiment to find out what exactly is going on. And so she and her students got together, and part of the effect that we're looking at she already knew, and it's called the Marangoni effect, which is that, you know, the, the wine, um, as you can see it now, it's really doing it now, but it has to do, obviously, with physics, <laughs> but it's gravity's pulling it down, and um, as the wine evaporates, so you've got this sort of pulling and, and, and gravity all um, involved in this. She can explain it far better than I can. I'm not much of a scientist, but I'll put the link to their article in there, and I also found um, a, a fuller um, explanation of this effect on how gravity and the Marangoni effect all create the, the legs and the, um, and the tears. Important to know that it doesn't mean it's quality. You will just find that um, the red wines that have a heavy death body and that's just sort of naturally what occurs. So don't let that um, fool you. But if you want to talk about a wine's legs or its tears, that's quite all right. Well, there we have a Zinfandel from Sonoma, received some high, high scores. Quite affordable, see 20 to $25 range, went, awesome, went so well with our smoked barbecue. I think you're going to truly like it. Let me know what you think, uh, if you found it, and if you, uh, if you also enjoyed the Zinfandel with whatever you had it with. It, you know, Zinfandel is it's one of those great ones. You can have it with steak. It doesn't have to be with you know, smoky barbecue, but wow, give that a try if you can. So there you have it, a California Zinfandel to go with our summer smoky barbecue. And we even demystified what meritage and uh, wine tears and wine legs are all about. So look for the description box. I'll give you some more information about those. And thank you for sharing uh, our channel with your friends and family and coworkers. I sure appreciate it. And I'll see you next time as we explore the world of wine together. Cheers, everyone.